foot travelers, I'm Micah. And I'm Simon. In this episode, we are in Las Vegas and we are going to visit a famous restaurant, a French restaurant as, as that is. It's a place called Bardo and it's a Michael Mina restaurant. Yeah, Bardo is actually located in the area and I'm actually very excited to try this restaurant. It's an award-winning kitchen with uh, Chef Michael Mina and Chef uh, Nick Dugan. Um, I'm very excited for this one. We actually made uh, reservations a long time ago and one of the requests that we made was uh, having a booth uh, seat. Uh, with a lot of the restaurants that we do make reservations to, we always ask for booth seating as they're a little bit more comfortable. But I was really surprised that they gave us this uh, booth seating because it's so big. Yeah, I agree, Micah. It was an awesome seat, um, especially with how large it was. It probably can fit six to eight people, but for them to give just the two of us the booth seating, um, that was just great. Very, very something that I am grateful to them for, um, especially since the seat is located right next to the kitchen. And so as you can see through the video, you'll see that we actually were able to film some of the kitchen and the things, activities that they were doing. Um, it was great. Uh, so I was really happy we were able to, to sit over there. Yeah, I definitely agree. I did not know uh, the layout of the restaurant was going to be uh, the way it's designed this way with the kitchen. Uh, being like an open style with with a glass just uh, separating you so you don't actually hear all the noises from the kitchen but you can actually see through and see them raise and lower the kitchen uh, the, um, the heat from the stove and, and that's just really really cool to see so starting off here in for our first dish the hors d'oeuvres we got the pan roasted uh, foie gras and that's with made with the, I think uh, celery pineapple tawny pour uh, macadamia nuts and uh, grilled lavain yeah this was an awesome dish it was so delicious savory sweet oh it's just hit the spot for me um seared frog gras is one of my favorite foods and sometimes you just don't quite find a place that makes it all too well but in this case it was just amazing i would go here and have this they probably multiple times days over and, um, and on end because it was just so good. I, I totally agree. I think the pairing with the pineapples gave it a really great uh, uh, crisp to it and it was a great pairing overall. I believe there was like a restaurant we went to a long time ago, Simon, back in San Francisco and that one was made with uh, peaches so I, I thought this one was a really good one too. Yeah, that one w was great back um, in San Francisco and it was actually hard for me to find a place that I really liked as much as there, but now um, since going to uh, Bardot, um, this is one that's probably one of my favorites that I know is still around and exists and is offered. And uh, moving on to our main entree dish, uh, we actually got the Bardot Wellington. It is a large format entree, so this does serve uh, two people. Um, so this one is made with a 12 ounce uh, prime rib, sorry, uh, 12 ounce prime filet mignon with uh, bayenne hams, uh, black truffles, and this uh, sauce perigudine. Is that how you say it, Simon? The sauce perigudine. Um, that's close enough. But yeah, it comes with uh, with the uh, uh, black truffle palm puree, which is um, you know kind of a mashed potatoes. Um, but this was also done really well. The medium uh, rare that we asked for was spot on. And one of the things that really stuck out to me was the crust. Um, I know, Michael, we've had Beef Wellington at other places. And one of the disappointing things that I've always found was when the dish would arrive, the, the crust would just, it, it gets soft and mushy. But in this case, it was nice and crispy, which was um, just fantastic. I totally agree, yeah. If you make beef wellington and the crust comes out soggy or arrives soggy, it's so disappointing. You're like, oh no, I paid so much for this and it's going to be so bad. <laughs> so the moment we got this, and even though we put our own sauce onto it, uh, the sauce that they gave us, um, it still stayed very uh, crispy, which was really, really good. Yeah, that's what kind of uh, stands kind of great uh, 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 beef wellington apart is the fact that it can stand up to you know the uh, the sauces and uh, the moisture that it's it's around and 
texturally it's one of those things where if you lose that crispiness of the crust you lose a huge uh, a piece of, of textural um, bite to the dish and so just the fact that they did have it and it stayed for such a long time um, it's just so well done really made yeah and in addition to this uh, uh, beef wellington we actually uh, added this uh, herb road or uh, herb crusted uh, bone marrow uh, and that one came with its own sauce and bread as well and I didn't really eat any of the bread I actually uh, scooped some of the bone marrow out and I added it to this uh, uh, filet mignon and that was amazing yeah that suggestion and I've got to give a shout out to Kim our server who was just great probably one of the uh, best servers I've ever been able to be served by and she was just awesome because she herself is a foodie and you'll see Kim show up in the uh, video um, she's a foodie herself and the fact that she explained kind of all the dishes and in detail and just we had so much fun talking to her about food that you know just making the experience and especially with the uh, with the uh, uh, table side uh, cooking that we had for our dessert um, the experience was just fantastic I totally agree, yeah. Thank you, Kim, if you are watching this. We had a blast at this restaurant. It was so much fun talking to you and, and being served by you. Amazing job. For the desserts, we actually had two separate desserts. We had the, um, what was that, uh, Michael, what did we have? We had the Baba Arum, which is the uh, first dessert that uh, Kim is uh, cooking here, which is a table side with a brown butter sauce. Uh, caramelized uh, Maui gold pineapples, Appleton uh, rum flambe. The second one was actually a chocolate grand macaroon. Um, it's made from a uh, French almond dough cookie and it has a hazelnut mousse and hot fudge covering it. Just a lot of chocolate. Um, the, the hot fudge itself and the chocolate, it looked like it was kind of a ganache that was kind of poured over it. Uh, very delicious, very uh, if you're a chocolate lover, that dessert is something that's going to hit the spot on every single point that you have for loving chocolate. Yeah, I definitely agree. I really, really enjoyed that macaroon uh, cookie thing. Um, that was really, really, really good. And also having that table side uh, uh, rum dish or rum dessert that they made, you don't see that very often anymore. A lot of restaurants kind of went away from these uh, table side uh, surface. Yeah, it, you know, it adds that little element of entertainment while you're dining. Um, you know, interior-wise, uh, Bardot is just beautifully set up. Um, you know, they, they definitely model itself after those French uh, restaurants back in France. And so, you know, it's just done so well. It kind of brings you back, but it kind of um, pulls you into that atmosphere. And so, you know, dining dining is just a it's one of those things where dining has become a pleasure at Bardo at least that's how I felt yeah I, I agree I, I would definitely want to come visit this restaurant again maybe even for like breakfast and probably dinner again and just try other dishes that they have uh, to offer here yeah and, and Kim she suggested that we do come back and try some other things so definitely I'm gonna take up her suggestion on that and hopefully we'll be able to head back to Vegas sometime soon and do do another shoot and, and hopefully film something like a uh, brunch or a breakfast, something else that uh, I'm really excited to, to try some more of their amazing food. Yeah, and this uh, macaroon uh, uh, chocolate uh, cake thing, it, it is so good. I, I believe there's like some sort of like orange zest or orangey flavor to it that kind of just balances it out too. Do you taste that, Simon? Yeah, it's a it's an orange, I don't say slice, uh, a thinly sliced orange and it's actually candied with uh, some um, liquor into it. And just eating that alone was really, really good. So I could actually just eat that alone, the candied uh, uh, orange slices. That was delicious. But um, as you see from the video, there's just layers and upon layers of chocolate. Um, the shaved chocolate on top of the macaroon and this thing was huge like I would say the size of a large hamburger <laughs> yeah I, I, I can see that yeah it, it definitely was big um, I, I can't imagine eating this all by yourself too I think that would just be sugar overload um, even if you're like the biggest sweet tooth and you 
you could eat chocolate for days. This is just too big for one person. I, I think this is perfect for like a, a table uh, shared uh, dessert dish. Yeah, I, I think even up to like six to eight people would be more than enough for them to get, you know, their chocolate fix. Um, but, you know, it's it was amazing and, and visually stunningly presented. Um, it's just so beautiful. Uh, I was very, very happy with Bordeaux and all the all the dishes they provided and everything they did. Um, and even with Kim and, and cooking table side, you know, just her explanation as she's going through adding the ingredients and everything, that was pretty amazing. Um, so informational and so entertaining. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Kim was really great in terms of uh... Uh, like Simon said, explaining everything to us, uh, what kind of ingredients they were using, how they came up with this dish, and uh, kind of just giving us uh, a little bit bits and pieces here that you don't really hear or see just from the menu itself. Uh, I, I think in terms of just explaining things, she did really, really good job on that, and, and it's always appreciated that um, the server is also a foodie, and she's not just saying things just to say it, and she actually enjoys being in, around food. Yeah, I agree, especially that recommendation she had for eating the, uh, the bone marrow with the, the, the uh, beef wellington itself, that combination. It was just, you know, just such a pleasure. I had such a pleasure eating there. And to finish off the episode are our notables. And for the very first notable, we actually had the seared foie gras, a beautifully composed dish that had a great combination of texture, uh, sweet and savory. It's a seared foie gras that I've been looking for for quite a while. I really enjoyed this dish and would love to come back and have more. Um, so if you do love foie gras, grab this dish. You won't be disappointed. And for the second notable is the Beef Wellington. It's a beautiful 12 ounce prime filet mignon and it's just beautifully cooked medium rare. Uh, flavor is very very good. Uh, the best part is the crust of this uh, Beef Wellington. It's just withstand the sauce and it will stay crispy all the way through. And for the third notable is the Chocolate Grand Macaroon. Uh, this one has a really crispy texture and it's melt in your mouth chocolate goodness inside it just hits the spot in terms of how much chocolate there is and that orange uh, slices it's just so so good and so delicious uh, best uh, chocolate dessert you can have it's so so good i can have this every single day and to support our channel don't forget to hit like subscribe and hit the notification bell for the youtube algorithm and for more photos follow us on instagram see you guys on the next episode